Hello everybody. Today we're going to be talking about electron configurations. Essentially what we're trying to do is create an address for every electron. Where does every electron live? Right. So how do we come up with an electron configuration? Well, it's determined by the distribution of the atoms' electrons among levels, sublevels, and orbitals based on a set of stated principles. And these stated principles are what we looked at in the last podcast of the Aufbau Principle. Remember that's taking and adding electrons at the lowest level possible as close to the nucleus as we can before you start filling outer orbitals. The Pauli exclusion principle, which said that electrons, you have two electrons per orbital, and they always have opposite spins. And Hund's rule, which said that if you have, for example, p orbitals, if you remember, you have three p orbitals, like kind of a px direction and a py direction and a pz direction, and each one's going to hold two, but you put one in first in each one before you start doubling up. Remember that? That was Hun's rule. Okay. So where in the world did those orbital diagrams come from that we did in our last podcast? What happens if you're not provided with one? Well, frankly, you can create your own. I and mean, I created my own. You can create your own. How do you do it? Well, you have to understand how the orbital diagrams fit together with the periodic table. We've told you the periodic table has bunches of information in it. Well, if we look at the periodic table, we'll notice a couple of things. First, helium typically is over here on most periodic tables, and you'll notice I've moved it, and I moved it over here to the S block. Now, you'll notice these are two columns wide, two groups wide, the S block is, right? And that would be one orbital. Remember, the S block is spherical. It will hold at most two electrons. Now, what about the P block? Well, over here you've got the P block, and remember that the P block holds six electrons. It has a PX, a PY, and a PZ, three orbitals, each one holding a maximum of two electrons. And you'll notice we have six groups here, starting with group five, the, the boron group. Sorry, that's not group five, that's group 3A. And then the carbon group, the nitrogen group, the oxygen group, the halogens, and the noble gases, six groups. And then in here we have the D block. If you remember, they had some strange shapes for those. These were the transition metals, these 10 blocks in here. And again, remember, there were five orbitals for that. And then finally down here, we have the F block, which has 14 groups in it, a total of seven orbitals. So if you remember, the S block had one orbital, the P block had three, the D block had five. Come on, you can talk to me. Thank you. D block had five, and the F block had seven. So for a total of... Each one of these multiplies by 2. Each orbital holds 2 electrons, so 2, 6, 10, and 14 electrons or groups. And that's the order. Now, you'll notice that we start here with the 1s, and then we go to the 2s and the 3s, all the way up to the 7s. You'll notice our p block starts at the 2 level. Notice we don't have any up here at the 1 level. So it starts at the 2 level and goes to the 3 level. Gallium would do the 4, the 4p, and indium would do the 5p, and whatever that is would do the 6p. Right? And you'll notice you have the d block, which starts at 3. Now, even though it starts at the same level as the 4s, the numbering system starts with 3s, and we'll get into that in a moment. So we have the 3d, the 4d, lu would be the 5d, and lr would be the 6d. And down here we have the f block, and you'll notice it has two levels, the 4f and the 5f. Notice it starts at 4, even though it's in this period, the sixth period down in here, it starts with four. All right, so kind of like, just look at the S block, P block, D block, and F block, you'll notice it's one, two, three, four. So it's real easy to remember. So this is kind of easier to read, it's not as busy. So you notice you have one S, two P, three D, and four F down at the bottom. Okay. Now, oh, let me go back one more slot, one other thing. I also filled in these guys down here. Um, you'll notice that I, I filled these in. Now, there's nothing down there, but if those elements are discovered, and some have been since this periodic table was created, they will actually fill in names down there. But those all belong to the P block. All right, so let's talk for a, a moment about main block elements, valence electrons, and why it's 3D instead of 4D. The electrons that bond are what we call valence electrons. They are ones in the highest energy level. The highest energy level of these numbers here. Right? And here we have two groups, and over here we have six groups. So 
Those are our main block elements, and that's where valence electrons tend to come from. So for example, if I have lithium, I'm going to have one valence electron. If I have beryllium, I'm going to have two, boron three, carbon four, nitrogen five, oxygen six, fluorine seven, and neon eight. Those are the ones that are in the outermost energy level, in the two energy level. All right? But then when I go to my third energy level, again, I'm going to have two from here and up to six from there. What happens when I get to my fourth energy level? You'd say, well, I'm going to have a total of 18. Well, no, I'm not because these guys are still at the 3D energy level. So my valence electrons are really dictated by the guys who are in the main block. So we can kind of ignore the transition metals for, so we can look at the electrons that are furthest away, hence our valence electrons, and they are the ones in the main block. So that's one of the reasons that the D block starts at the level 3, so that its numbers are lower than 4. Okay. What would it take to create the electron configuration? Think of the orbital diagrams for elements 118. That would take a lot of work. Well, actually, it's not as complicated as you might think. So let's go back to this, this drawing, and I'm going to actually write it on here. Uh, what we do is we start with element number 1. And we look at this element, and we say, where is that electron coming from? Well, this is the S block here, and it's in the first S block. And here, we have a second one, and it's still in the S block. Remember, the S block can hold at most two electrons. So, in our 1S level, we can hold two electrons. Now, we're done with our 1S level. The next thing we have is number 3, lithium, which is number 3, and then beryllium, which is number 4. And they are also in an S block, but they are at the second energy level. So, they're at the 2S, and again, they're two electrons. How about that's 1, 2, 3, and 4. We have four electrons so far, right? We've got two up here, and we've got two there, right? Two here, and we've got two there. So now we're going to go over and look at electron numbers 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. They are all in the P block, and I've got a total of six of them, and they're at the 2P energy level. So the next thing is my 2P level, and I have six electrons. Okay, so what comes next? Well, I'm done with electron number 10. I have to go to electron number 11. Electron number 11 is sodium, and it's in my 3S level. You'll notice 3S. And then comes magnesium, which is number 12, and then I'm done with my S block. That's 3S, and I can hold two electrons. And then similarly, similarly over here, I have my 3P, and my 3P will hold six electrons. That's electrons 13 through 18. So I'm done all the way up to 18. Now I start with number 19, and number 19 is in my 4S level. 19 and 20 are in my 4S level. The next thing I have is 4S. And I have two electrons in my 4S. But then notice what comes next for element number 21. Element number 21 is in my 3D level. So I have to switch from 4S down to 3D. And how many electrons are in my 3D level? Well, I've got all the one from 21 to 30. That's a total of 10. 10, that's a 0. Okay. And then after 30, I come up with 31. And now, remember, this is the 2P, this is the 3P. This must be my 4P down here. And again, I have 6 electrons down here. So this is going to be my 4P. It's going to be 6. So that finishes all the way up to krypton. All right, well, now I have to keep going, so what's next? Well, I look for element number 37. Number 37 is rubidium. It's in my 5S energy level. So I'm going to continue. Don't have room on that line, so I'm just going to continue. 5S, and I have two electrons there. And then comes my 4D, because I'm looking at element number 39. So that's 4D, and I have 10 electrons there. And so I finish all the way up to 48, and then I start at 49. And let's see, that's a 2P to 3P to 4P. This must be the 5P, so my 5P energy level. And one way to remember that, guys, sorry, my bad. I can't talk and write at the same time. One way to remember that is you'll notice it's the same as the 5S. They're at the same level. So your 5S, 5P, I have processed all the way out to element, which is xenon, which is number 54. So I'm there. All right. So now I start at number 55, which is cesium, which is 6S. And I have two. Now be careful. What comes after 56? It's number 57. Well, 57 is all the way down here. Right? 
57 is in my 4F level. So I start at 57, I can go all the way up to 70. So this is my 4, and it's an F, and I have a total of 14 electrons in there to get up to 70. Then I come back to number 71, and number 71 it is now at my 5D level, and I have 10 there, and then I have 6P, and I have 6 there. You start to see the pattern? All right, and let's finish off our, our last period, which starts off with 7S. We have two electrons there. And after our 7S, remember that's number 86. We have to go, to, I'm sorry, 88. We have to go to 89, which is down here. So we're going to have our 5F. I'm going to write it down here. 5F. And again, I'm going to have 14 elements down there. And then I go into my 6D. I have 10 elements there. This is 3D, 4D. This is 5D. This is 6D. So I'm 6D. And I've got 14 elements. And then the last thing I have is 7P. And I have 6 over there. All right? So that is the entire, uh, the entire electron configuration for coming up with something that was in element 18. Now, if I'm stopping somewhere along the way, I just stop. So, for example, let's say that I wanted, uh, let's say, oxygen, for example. And if I look for oxygen, I notice it's number 8. Well, I have to just count 8 electrons. So up here I've got 2, up here I've got 4, and up here I've got 6, so that's a total of 10. I don't want that many, so I change that last number. All right. So oxygen would be, let's see if I can write this, 1s2, 2s2, 2p, and I only need four electrons because I have to make a total of eight electrons. So it's going to be 2p4. Okay. So let's write some electron configurations. All right. I'm, I'd like you to pause the video, see if you can fill some of these in. If you can't fill them in, then watch me do a couple, and then uh, pause the video at any time and go and do some on your own. Okay. So see if you can do them. Pause the video. All right. Beryllium, I'm going to write this down just so I know it's number 4. Right? Now, beryllium is number 4, so that means I'm going to have 2 electrons in my 1s level and 2 electrons in my 2s level, and that's a total of 4 electrons, 2 there and 2 there, so I'm done. Nitrogen is number 7. Right? So my pattern continues, 1s2, 2s2, and now I have to go into my 2p level, and my 2p level, I can only have a total of 3 electrons. The 2p will hold 6 electrons, but I can only have 3 because I have to stop at number 7. Magnesium, on the other hand, is number 12, so I get to go past 7. So I have a 1s2, 2s2, 2p, 6. Right? So I have a total there of 10, and then I have to have 2 more, which is going to be in my 3s, and I'm going to have 3s2. If you're confused, go back and make sure that you mark down on your periodic table what all the levels are. Sorry, my bad. Similar to what you see over here, where you see you've got a 1s and a 2s and a 3s, and over on the right you've got a 2p and a 3p, and down in the B block you've got a 3d and a 4d, and in your F you've got a 4f and a 5f. Go ahead and write those down, just so that you make sure that you have them on your own periodic table, and that will help you as you are numbering these things. So magnesium has 12 electrons. There are two here. There are two there for a total of four. There are six there for a total of 10. And then there are two more for a total of 12. All right. Let's go out and look at phosphorus. Phosphorus is number 15. It happens to be directly under nitrogen. So it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p. And again, I have three. And notice just for a moment, look at the, those two. Notice how... They both end in P3s. Notice beryllium and magnesium. They're one above each other. Notice they both end in S2s. Isn't that interesting? You should be able to figure out why that happens. All right, look at argon. Argon's number 18. It's all the way at the end. It's a noble gas. That means its P block is going to be full. So what do we have? We have 1S2, 2S2, 2P6. Right, notice my P block here is full, and this is neon, because I've got 10 electrons. All right, well, I have to keep going. So 3s2, sorry, the 2 goes up there, and 3p6. I now have a total of 18 electrons, and I've hit argon. Notice my P block again is full. All right, let's go do iron. Iron's number 26. This is the first time we're getting into something that's, that's the D block. So I have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 
3s2, 3p6. Now comes the fun. I've got 18. I'm up through argon. So now I go to 4s, and I've got 2. So now I'm up to 20. Now I need 6 more, but remember that the, that the 6 more are in the D block. And remember that instead of being at the 4d, I'm only at the 3d. So this is the 3d6. Right. And bromine is going to be very similar, except I have to finish out my D block and go to my uh, P block. So this is number 35. So I have 1s2. Sorry, let's try that again. Pen is being silly. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2. Sorry, that's an S. 2. 3D, and now I've got 10, this time instead of 6, and then 4P, and I'm stopping at bromine, which is the fifth one over, so it's 4P5. Now, it doesn't hurt to check your work. Notice that I have 2 plus 2 plus 6 is 10, plus 2 plus 6 plus 2, which is 20, plus 10 more, which is 30, plus 5 more, which is 35, so I, in fact, do have 35 electrons I've accounted for, so it's important that you do that. All right, so again... Pause the video, you do a couple, and when you come back, um, I'll do them with you. Okay. Welcome back. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p, and now I have to count, and that's going to be 3p4. Right, that should be 16 electrons, and if I count across the top, I get 16 electrons. B has 23 electrons, so it's 1s2. 2s2, you notice the pattern always remains the same, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, and then 3d, and I have to count across 3 to get my last 3. Now how about zirconium? Zirconium is a whole level further down. So it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. You do enough of these, you get pretty comfortable writing these. 3p6. Those kind of just flow without even thinking. 4s2, 3d10, because I have to fill up this level, 4p6. All right, I finished up my fourth energy level. I go to my fifth energy level, which is 5s2. And then I go to 4d, and I have to do 1, 2 to get to zirconium, so it's going to be 2. All right, now how about lead? Lead's way down at the bottom. Lead is number 82. This one's going to take a while. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 3s2, 3p6. I have to fill my fourth energy level. 4s2, 3d10, and 4p6. All right, I have to fill my fifth energy level. 5s2, 4d10, 5p6. I have to go to my sixth energy level. Now, this is where it gets important because now pb is in here. So this is 6s2. And remember, now we have to throw in the f block. So it's going to be 4, F, 14, and now I have to go and I have to fill up my D block. So it is 5, D10, and when that's full, I have two more electrons to put in, so it's 6P, and it's 2. If you have questions about these, please come find me in class, and I'll be happy to help. Right. Now, what happens if you can work your way backwards? How do you do this? Well, clearly, all you have to do is count electrons. So I'll give you a second look at the first one. You should see that there are two electrons, plus two more, plus five. That's a total of nine electrons. And so that means you have fluorine. All right. So using that as an example, do the rest of them. All right. So your first one here ends in 3D1. This is going to be scantio. If you add it up, you have a total of 21 electrons. The next one is ending in 4P4. That's selenium. That's number 34. Scantium is 21. And my last one ends in 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, P4, which is going to be a total of 52 electrons if you add them up. And so that's going to be the element TE. All right. What happens when you have an ion? And want to just add this one more thing with an ion. Sodium, if we look at sodium, it has 11 electrons, which is 1s2, 2s2, 
56 3s1. Well, when it becomes a positive ion, remember if something becomes a positive ion, it has to lose an electron. So this electron here will, be, will disappear. It will go away. So if I have sodium as a positive ion, it's going to be 1s2, 2s2, and 2p6. Okay? Because the 3s1 had to go away. Now what about fluorine? Fluorine is 1s2, 2s2, and 2p5. It has a total of 9 electrons. But if it has a negative charge, it's going to add an electron. So that would make it 1s2, 2s2, and 2p6. Do you notice something? These two are the same. You can't distinguish the electron configuration between sodium as a positive ion and fluorine as a negative ion. In fact, if we look at neon, which is 1s2, 2s2, and 2p6, because it has a total of 10 electrons, you'll notice you can't distinguish among any of these three. Right? So that is true for an ion, whether it, you have to look at whether it gains or it loses electrons. Do you try a few? I'll give you a minute. Uh, realize that magnesium it has a 2 plus charge, so that means you're doing something with two ions. So give it a shot. Okay, pause the video, try them, and then come back. All right. Magnesium has a 2 plus charge. It normally has 12 electrons, but since it's only going to have 10 electrons, because it has to lose two, it's going to be 1s2, that's two electrons, 2s2, that's four electrons, 2p6, that's 10 electrons, and we are done. No, we're not. Yes, we are. We're only supposed to have 10 electrons. How about aluminum? Aluminum takes on a plus 3 charge. Well, aluminum normally has 13 electrons, but we're going to lose 3, so we're going to only going to have 10 electrons, and oh my gosh, it's going to be the same as what we have up there, because it's only 10 electrons. How about phosphorus? Well, phosphorus has to take on a minus 3 charge, or it might take on a minus 3 charge. So phosphorus typically has 15 because there's a minus 3, it's going to become 18. So that's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So I'm looking at 18, so look on the periodic table and see what has 18 typically. And typically that's argon with 18 electrons. So that is the same electron configuration as argon. Now oxygen, oxygen is typically number 8, but it has a 2 minus charge, so that means it's going to go to 10. So, guess what, folks? It's going to be the same as these things up here. It's going to be 1s2, 2s2, and 2p6. And bottom line is, we cannot tell the difference just by looking at the electron configuration. Okay, so what you need to be able to do is you need to be able to create an electron configuration for any element or any ion, and you need to be able to work backwards for elements. You can't work backwards for ions because you don't know what it is, but you can work backwards for elements. If you have questions, please see me in class. Um, and uh, have a great day. See you soon. Bye.